After the semi-final was successfully negotiated last night, thousands of supporters queued online to book their seats for the Wembley outing with many taking to Twitter to post their joy. For those who have already purchased their tickets, the countdown is now on to the big day out on May 26. But for thousands of others, the wait to get a seat at the National Stadium remains. This is the direct link where you can buy tickets and the warning from the club, visit here. The club have released a breakdown of when you can get your ticket and the different criteria you have to meet. Here's a full breakdown, when is the match? The match takes place on Saturday the 26th of May 2018 and will kick off at 5 p.m. What is the ticket office number? Telephone 0333 323 1874 Tel International 0044 121 327 5353 Fax 0121 328 5575 How many tickets do Villa have? The club have been allocated 38,144 in the west end of the stadium. Things you missed reactions talking point scenes when do the tickets go on sale? Season ticket holders and Claret members and club members can start to buy them from Wednesday the 16th of May, online. The graphic from the club below shows who can buy the tickets and when. There are also a number of price and categories with concessions in each band. The club are urging people to buy their tickets online due to the huge demand. All ticket details can be found here. Warning West Midlands Police have issued a warning to Aston Villa fans who ran on the pitch after the club's victory over Middlesbrough. They have warned fans that they will be studying CCTV footage to identify fans doing more than just entering the field of play. In a strongly worded message on social media, they stated that some fans could be hit with a football banning order or a three-year ban from the club. They explained on Twitter, CCTV and EGT footage as well as Sky footage will be checked, and any person identified doing more than entering the pitch i.e. goading Middlesbrough fans or holding Pyro will be invited for interview and receive an FBO and or three years club ban. When asked if they condoned the invasion of the pitch, they replied, not condoning it but haven't got resources to deal with thousands so have to be realistic about prosecution. We will publish images in the press of persons we are unable to identify. One male was arrested last night on the pitch with a pyro, this individual will likely face a three-year FBO and or a three-year club ban which will now pre-close him from Wembley, Pulis says Tony Pulis was left to reflect on yet another big game defeat at Villa Park last night. Pulis West Brom missed the chance to head to Wembley in the FA Cup quarterfinal in 2015 at the hands of Aston Villa and his Middlesbrough side couldn't atone for that defeat. Mile Yedinak's first leg header at the Riverside was enough to see Villa on their way to the capital, despite a 0-0 draw in the second leg on home turf. Here's everything opposition boss Pulis had to say in his post-match press conference. Sum that up over the two games I think there's been periods where we've been on top and dominant, and in those periods we've not created the opportunities and the chances to win games. People will say over the two legs it's a set piece that's been the difference between us. It hurts me to say this because we've just lost but the teams that finished third and fourth are the teams that go to Wembley, and over a season to 46 games it's justified. Air play to Fulham and Aston Villa. Should Johnston have gone? You write what you want to write. I think it's a disappointing decision from one of our top officials. Not work the keeper no. Even George, friend, first half gets in on two occasions. He's behind the back four and a ball back and Brit, Asom Belonga, is in. We've had opportunities and we've got to turn those opportunities into chances and goals. 
Over the two games, we've had really good spells and we haven't created as many chances or taken those chances. Villa are a stubborn, well-organized, experienced team. The players have given everything over the two legs. Bordeaux Project it's a very good football club. It's got an excellent chairman who has plowed a lot of money into the club over the years. He understands football, which helps. It's a fabulous club and everyone wants to help us go forward. We've got to put a team on the pitch that justifies the great support we've got. I'll give Villa and Fulham credit. Justice, they could say, has been done. The players are flat, and very disappointed. We really thought we could come here and win tonight. Even with the crowd and everything that comes with it, we really thought we could get a result. Even after Saturday's game, a game we really shouldn't have lost. I know what we need and I know what's necessary. I won't waste Steve Gibson money, he's spent an awful lot of money. Moments you missed it's a night Aston Villa haven't experienced in many a year. Steve Bruce's team knew they only needed to hold Middlesbrough to a draw at Villa Park to secure passage through to the championship playoff final against Fulham a week on Saturday. Here are a few moments you might have missed on a thrilling night at B6. Aston Villa playoff final tickets, the prices, total allocation and how to buy yours Adama's hair. Adama is most definitely a player who likes to be the center of attention, whether that's thanks to one of his breakneck speed dribbles or his flamboyant hairstyles. The Spanish winger emerged from the tunnel with a bleach blonde mohican for tonight's match. Pre-match fireworks talk about hyping up the occasion. Fulham gave their fans a few clappers to use during their playoff win against Derby County on Monday night but Villa topped that. The players walked out to a raucous atmosphere and a massive fire display. This one probably eclipsed the one Villa Park witnessed on New Year's Day for the 5-0 demolition of Bristol City. The club had planned to bring down a huge banner in front of the whole end which read, We are Villa, but plans were shelved at the last moment. Villa Park's past and future Sky Sports brought Paul Merson along to provide expert analysis of tonight's match. The former Villa Park favorite was pitch side along with Scott Minto and Keith Andrews. Merson, the player many villains picked out as the most talented they've watched in Claret and Blue, was joined on the hallowed turf by a crop of youngsters the club hopes will be its future. Kevin McDonald and Mark Delaney's talented under-23s missed out on promotion to Premier League 2 Division 1 at the weekend but they still have a Premier League Cup to show for an excellent season. Jordan Lydon, Jacob Bado and co paraded their cup around the ground before kickoff and took the applause of 40 odd thousand supporters. Polis and Kemp's fury it only took three minutes of Saturday's match at the Riverside for Boros game plan to be revealed. If you have the ball, give it to Adama Tror, it's as simple as that. Boros players' failure to carry out those instructions doesn't go down well with manager Tony Pulis or his assistant Dave Kemp. The pair were infuriated on the touchline in the first half as Ryan Shotton and co. couldn't reach Rora down the right. That wasn't the only thing which angered Pulis throughout the 90 minutes. He was often in the ear of the fourth official Paul Tierney telling him where referee Mike Dean was going wrong. Man versus boy now, this is something you most definitely missed. Only a small section of the press box were privileged enough to see a grown man grapple with a small boy over Alan Hutton's shirt. We're pleased to report the kid won.